Over on the Michigan football Instagram page, A.Car6 asked this question. He says, if JG leads us to a 15-0 season, third straight Big Ten championship, and a national championship, is he now the best Michigan quarterback of all time? That is a hell of a question. It's one I've thought about when I saw that question posed on our Instagram uh, account. I thought I had to put this on today's show. We've got five burning questions for the 2023 Michigan football team. This is the year, guys. Houston or bust. The game is happening about three hours away from where I live in Dallas, Texas. I'm going to be there. I'm booking I'm booking a hotel right now if I have to. It, uh, it's, we're going to be there in Houston. Michigan's got to get over the hump. All right, 2021, it was Ohio State. 2022, it was an undefeated season. 2023, it is winning that college football semi playoff semifinal game. Give them a chance in a national championship game when anything can go. If you guys want a free Michigan football jersey, keep watching. About six, seven minutes from now, we're going to tell you how one of our partners is giving uh, all of our viewers who want to get started with them a free Michigan football Jordan brand jersey. So keep watching. About six, seven, eight minutes from now, we're going to tell you how to win that. So the question is, if Michigan wins it all, is J.J. McCarthy the best Michigan quarterback ever? Answer the question in the live chat. Answer that question in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Certainly there's plenty of guys out there that could be considered the one. But if J.J. McCarthy goes to a national championship, 15-0 even, more a loss and it still makes it in there, he's going to have a two-year run as starter in 2022 and 2023 that I think, at least in the modern day, are unmatched for a Big Ten or a Michigan football player. So that's the question I'm starting off with this burning question. Is J.J. McCarthy an elite, elite quarterback? What do I mean by elite, elite quarterback? I am talking about a guy that when you talk to a non-Michigan fan, you talk to a fan of an SEC or a Big 12 school, five, ten years from now, they can remember things that he did. I talk about a Joe Burrow, okay? We're talking about a Trevor Lawrence. We might be talking about Tua. Uh, Prior to that, Baker Mayfield, it's elite, elite. Cam Newton, Tim Tebow, Matt Leiner. Those are the kind of guys. There's probably... Johnny Manziel, right? Six a decade, five, six a decade, eight a decade. Can J.J. McCarthy be one of those guys? I'm projecting him to have a bigger year. If you see these stats, I'm basing it on 15 games. I think Michigan's going to make it the national title game. If they do, and he only has 31 touchdown passes, I might say, you know what, James, you were right. But I'm actually disappointed at this point because if he gets Michigan to the national title game, I feel like that means he's taken that elite, elite level, and I hope he's up there with some of the better quarterbacks in college football over the past decade, 38, 40, 46 touchdown passes in that range. 31 would be a Michigan record, but it certainly wouldn't be anything to uh, you know brag about when you're talking about elite, elite quarterbacks. All eyes are on JJ, right? He showed glimpses of greatness against Ohio State, right? Avoiding that pass rush, getting the ball off to Cornelius Johnson, letting Cornelius make a move, go to the touchdown. Uh, stepping up in the pocket, you know, a couple possessions later, Cornelius Johnson again, wide open, but he didn't, you know, JJ McCarthy, other Michigan quarterbacks in the past, as soon as he let the ball go, I'm like, he's going to overthrow him. He's going to, no, no, right in the bread basket, touchdown. Stepping up in the pocket against in the second half, hitting Colson Loveland down there. Third down and goal. Michigan's up by just a few points in the third quarter. Just knocking your head down, getting in the end zone, scoring that touchdown. Uh, and there was a play also in the third quarter where he just broke off three tackles, right? Really kind of told Ohio State who his boss. First half against TCU, disaster. But second half, he proved that, hey, I can lead a pass first, past happy offense for this program. I'm thinking this. Is he the next Andrew Luck or the next Chad Henney? Right? What does Andrew Luck mean? Right? If you look back uh, 2009 Andrew Luck, he had like 13, 14, 15 touchdowns, something like that. He leveled up. He like 33, 34 in 2010, or 2010, and then I think like 36, 37 in 2011 after Jim Harbaugh. Or Chad Henney, which is, hey, his first year as a starter, that's about as good as you're going to get, and he's never really going to progress. If you look at Chad Henney, the true freshman in 2004, Chad Haney, the senior in 2007, and everything in between is a four-year starter. I'm not sure you could realistically say that the 2004 version wasn't even actually the best guy. So which JJ are we getting? Are we getting a Trevor Lawrence where the shackles come off in year two, Harbaugh has a little more trust, and he is an elite quarterback, all-American quarterback, Heisman contender, uh, can win Michigan a playoff game or a national championship game? Or is it a Chad Haney where you know, you're going to get 22 of 29 for 216 yards, two touchdowns, and that's about all you're going to get. I think that's just the question. That's the difference in this question. If it's Andrew Luck, all the other talent is a national championship team. If it's Chad Henney, you're going to lose either Ohio State or Penn State. You're going to lose that uh, uh, CFP semifinal game again. And that's just kind of how things are. Second question up, can Michigan stop Georgia? And why am I talking about Georgia? All right. Um, I think it's the, it's the, it's the big boss. Um, 
Alabama's down. They, they might be in the national championship game this year. LSU could be Florida State. Right? There's all kinds of teams. But right now, LSU is the only team, I'm sorry, Georgia is the only team ranked ahead of Michigan in the polls. And we saw the last two years, those are kind of the best two teams in college football over the last two seasons. I think this guy could be the difference maker. I think that if Michigan's going to beat Georgia, it's not going to be by out-athleting them at every position. It's not going to be by having better defensive offensive line. It's going to be just like in the, the, the documentary on Netflix, The Swamp, they felt that if Percy Harvin was on the field, they could beat anybody because he'd get the ball in his hands and take it to the house, score a touchdown whenever they were needed. And that's how confident I am in the Don. What I'm least confident in is Michigan's ability to get him the ball at those opportune times when they absolutely need a score. If you guys haven't seen yet, we've got a Don t-shirt, the Don 7. I got one for my son. He wears it nearly every day. I've also, he, I watched those two runs against Ohio State so much this offseason. Uh, on our big screen on YouTube, etc., that my son is just obsessed with Donovan Edwards, even though he really didn't really care about football much before last November. Uh, he's got a Don shirt. He's got a Donovan Edwards t-shirt jersey and a real jersey. If you guys want a Donovan Edwards jersey, go to chatsports.com slash down7. The link's down in the comments and the description. Uh, also putting it in the live chat here on our live Wednesday 5 o'clock show. And one more quick request from you guys. Can we get to 27,000 subscribers here on the Michigan Football Report. We've added about 15, 16 since we started this live show. If you're watching later on the week, that number might be creeping more towards 27,000. But subscribe if you have it. Daily shows now through February 7th. Weekly lives every Wednesday and probably game days almost every week. Uh, send the link to your friends who are Michigan football fans. Tell them to watch the show. Biggest audience of any program on any platform. TV, radio, podcast, YouTube, in all of 2022. And we hope to do that again in 2023. You know, I just I'm just getting so annoyed with Georgia. So annoyed. They're such a so kind of a pointless, not pointless team, but it's unremarkable team, unmemorable team, right? I watched Swamp Kings. I can remember all kinds of things with those four teams. I remember USC teams like they were left and right. I remember some Alabama teams. I have memories from Johnny Menzel ten years ago. I have memories from that LSU national championship. Even though I don't follow those teams, I have no memories from Georgia, right? I have, the only memory I have is the game I went to when they beat TCU sixty-five to seven. I, I have no memories of anything that was special about these teams. I'm just irritating. Their fans are chirping me on Twitter left and right. So kind of beat Georgia if you can uh, because they started to infiltrate Georgia fans because of my Twitter account, infiltrate our YouTube comments. Let's make that a hostile environment for them. Let me ask you guys this question before we continue on with our Michigan football burning questions. Three more to go. Who will win the 2023 Heisman Trophy? I think Michigan was a play or two away from winning back-to-back -back Heisman trophies. If Aiden Hutchinson gets that uh, you know, touchdown against uh, Michigan State, I think it was a touchdown, strip touchdown, whatever it was, against Michigan State. They don't overturn that. And then Bryce Young doesn't have a last-minute win game-winning drive uh, on the evening that Michigan beat Ohio State in 2021 against Auburn. They lose that game. He doesn't win the Heisman. Aiden Hutchinson does. If Blake Corm doesn't get hurt against Illinois, one play, I think he wins the 2023 Heisman Trophy. Michigan could have back-to-back -back Heisman winners. Let me know who you guys think. I think Michigan's got three guys in this roster who could win it. J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corm, and Diamond Edwards. Third burning question is who's going to merge at the other cornerback spot, right? We're calling Mike Sanders a nickel corner. We're not putting him in this equation of cornerback two or cornerback three. I am going to show you my cornerback depth chart and who I think is going to be the starter opposite Will Johnson. If he is in the lineup, might be a little load management here in a moment, but college football is here this weekend. If you're pumped like I am, I am going to spend all kinds of time on Saturday. I'm locking myself in the man cave. I'm going to be watching Michigan College Football all Saturday. Get myself ready for next week. Comment me if you're pumped. Here's the week zero odds. Top row there is the two game that's the, you know that and then the top row bottom row are the two games I'm focusing on this weekend. Notre Dame heading to Dublin. They're facing Navy. They're 20 and a half point favorites. The over under that one is 49. USC 30 and a half point favorite. Uh, they've got the Heisman Trophy returning Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams. Over San Jose State, 66 and a half is the over-under. I'm going to be betting both those games at BetUS, chatsports.com slash go blue, chatsports.com slash go blue. Put the link in your browser now, screenshot it. You got to go to that link. If you do go to that link and you use promo code go blue, no spaces, you will also get an additional 125% deposit bonus. A Michigan football jersey, Jordan brand jersey from us to you, chatsports.com slash go blue. All that, so that first step, that's really all that matters. Because if not, you don't show up on a report. we got to be like, well, tell us this, tell us that. Uh, sign up a deposit of $100 or more. You get your 125%, 125% deposit bonus. Deposit up to $500, get an extra 625 bonus. Make your first bet. Email us. Email us. Email us. Jersey at chatsports.com. 
to redeem. We'll get your account number, your size, your address, and ship you off a Michigan football number one jersey. The real stuff, not some Walmart knockoff, real Jordan brand number one Michigan football jersey. Chatsports.com slash go blue. Support us, support our sponsor, and we'll support you back with a Michigan football jersey. Get going with BetUS. Chatsports.com slash go blue. Promo code go blue. Here's my depth chart. And this is depending on everybody's going to play. Right, Will Johnson, as you probably heard me say this week, is been held out of the last couple uh, padded scrimmages, and I think there's a chance that Michigan could load manage him even with sitting him out a game or two, or only being in one or two uh, series before sitting out, as long as Michigan feels like they're in control of the game. Who's going to be the cornerback two? If Will Johnson's out, who's going to be cornerback one and two or three? Or they have to go five or six, uh, you know, cor- you know, defensive backs deep against bigger passing teams, against Ohio State later on in the year. Um, I think that's just something to, to think about. If Michigan doesn't figure that cornerback two position out, you could have a situation where like, gosh, we're one player away from a national title. I think that um, transfer from UMass, Josh Wallace, I think he is the starter for sure. I think book it after everything that we've been told in the past week. So that could be your starter, your quarterback two, but he hasn't faced big level competition and excelled. He's coming over from UMass, Don Brown's defense last year. Kobe forgot everything that he learned there. But behind him, Amarian Walker was hurt. Now he's back in there. Freshman, Jair Hill, Miles Pollard. Will they make an impact? There's a lot of guys. Cody Jones, some of those safeties. Zeke Berry could uh, potentially get playing time at corner as well. So that's a big question for us. Houston or bust for me for this team. If they figure this position out, Houston, book it for Michigan. We're booking Josh Wallace. You can book Houston uh, if Michigan can figure out that cornerback two and hell, even their cornerback three position. Fourth burning question for us on the Michigan football report it pertains to Jim Harbaugh. Will this suspension be a distraction for this program? It's already been a distraction for me, right? Saturday night announcements, Monday afternoon announcements, all this different stuff is a distraction for what I'm doing here with the show and, and our job. We're giving you information and it's wrong information and there's new information. It's been distracting. I hope that this is a rallying moment for this team, for this program. That's it. Everybody's after us, right? You think about things in life. You ever have a situation, Jack, where you've got like an argument with somebody or like, hey, like things went bad or things were weird with us. And like you kind of like don't talk to them for a while or like uh, you know, it was like beef with somebody. And then like you have it out. You kind of just say like, you, you, you get past it. Then like the, the relationship almost improves for a while, right? And then it comes back to its equilibrium. I'm thinking for this for Michigan is that this is a rally moment where they can't break through. It's like this is the thing that rallies them to say, F it. Sometimes in life when – Everything's going the wrong way, or if uh, if you know you just it's like the darkest days. It's like the darkest days, or right before dawn, whatever it is. Is if you're just saying effort sometimes in life, you'll make decisions that sometimes you would more than likely be held back from doing. Right? I can't give a great example of that. I just be like, hell, I'm gonna go up to that girl and tell her she's beautiful because you know what? If not, I'm never gonna see her again. That's an example of it right here. This could be kind of a rallying cry. It's like, hell, we're just gonna go out and win the whole freaking thing to stick it to the NCA. Jim Harbaugh, is this a distraction? I think it's a rallying moment for Michigan. It can be if they have the right mindset and don't get bummed out by their head coach not being on the sidelines. Number five, it's just really like, can Michigan win a playoff game? Can this team win a playoff game? Six, one, two, three, four, five, six straight college football playoff or bowl losses for Jim Harbaugh. The 2016, 17, 18, 19, 21, and 22 seasons. Last two in the CFP. At least three of them are unacceptable. Florida State, South Carolina, TCU, unacceptable. They were the better team. Alabama, eh, Georgia, probably not. Um, who's the other one I'm missing? Oh, Florida four, honestly. That Florida team, Michigan was definitely better than that Florida team as well in the 2018 season. That was a, a really, a really big bummer. Um, I think Michigan needs to win a playoff game. Can they win a playoff game? Can they do it? Because you might say, well, what happens if they get to Houston and they don't win the national title? They lose to Georgia again. That's a wasted season. I don't think so. I'll be disappointed. I'll be bummed. But it's just like breaking through. Right? It's breaking through and getting there. And maybe 2024 Michigan isn't nearly as good as 2023 or 2022. It may take a, a down year or two. Uh, and down year could be 10-2 and two or 9-3 and three, to get back to where this team is right now here in 2023. But I think this last three years will kind of have a little bit of a, you know, a scarlet letter, a stain on it. If you make the CFP three times and have three straight losses. So I'll ask you guys, can they get that college football playoff semifinal win? Will Michigan make it to the national championship game? 
Houston or bust. Give me an H if Houston. They're playing Houston national title game. Give me an N if no, they will not. Let me know what you guys are thinking. For me, I've been saying this for months. It is Houston or bust. If I am in Houston and Michigan isn't in that damn national championship game, I'm probably just going to pout, Jack. I'm probably not going to do anything, but I'm not going to be very happy. Houston or bust for me. It's the 2023 Michigan football season, and it is the live daily videos for the 2023 Michigan football report.